He's helping break the stigma by taking his meds live. Whatever stereotype you're going to try to put on me isn't going to fit. That's for sure. Because there's no stopping me. Ask your healthcare provider if Big Tarvi is right for you. And visit BigTarvi.com to view the important facts, including important warnings. Welcome to Plus Talk on Plus Life, where we are about turning positive into a plus. My guest today is the epitome of that. He has been taking his medicine, his HIV meds, online every night for the world to see in a way to combat stigma. And he joins me now. Jason Elvin, good to see you. Hi, thank you for inviting me. Thank you for coming on. Uh, this idea that, that you decided that you're going to take your HIV med pretty much at the same time every night on Facebook for the world to see. How did that come about? So I had been HIV positive for about a year before I started the, the show. Um, and for the first year, uh, HIV was some, something that seemed to consume my every waking moment, all my thoughts. Like, so it seemed impossible that I would ever forget to take a dose. But um, about a year after, like it, it did, um, I became more comfortable with it, I guess, and I missed a dose. And I, uh, I had already been doing a Facebook Live show, just uh, just random things like uh, just, um, taking naps or making grilled cheese, I, just random things. And uh, like when I missed the dose, I thought, well, maybe I could take my pill live. Right? And I came up with the idea of buy mouth daily, where I could take my my pill by mouth live daily, but it's, it's also, it's spell it B-I, so, uh, so you could hear from a bisexual mouth on the daily as well. So yeah, it, it's, it's a way to, uh, as a, to take the pill as a reminder for me to, to take it every day, but also as a platform to discuss the issues about HIV. Yeah, well, I mean, two birds with one stone, and it really, the response you've had from people, what's that been like? I, I, it's been definitely varied, but I think uh, for the most part, it's been really people have been really accepting. Um, I I share the show in uh, odd places, I, um, different troll groups on Facebook, different places where I want to get the message out to people. I don't want just to be an echo chamber, and I want to reach people. You know, the people that would tend to troll the show are the perfect people that need to hear the message about what you equals you and about prep. And um, so, and I, some of my best. Um, uh, most loyal fans came from people that initially came to troll the show and just respected the fact that I, you know, I didn't ban them and and gave them the opportunity to speak and and um, yeah. So I think for the most part, it's been uh, people have sent me things like T-shirts and gifts and all sorts. The people have been really really great actually. Now you're a registered nurse, right? Correct. Yeah. So you're I, you're a registered nurse, obviously well versed in a lot of health topics. When you got your HIV diagnosis. Was there anything that surprised you that you, you know, now living with HIV that you went, wow, I didn't fully get that? Oh, for sure. When I was diagnosed in 2015, I think it was right before the U equals U consensus statement, but I think it was still pretty well known that uh, the lower your uh, viral load, the lower your risk of transmission. And I had no clue uh, of that. And I, I mean, um, I didn't, wasn't aware that PrEP was an option and, uh, you know, I certainly would have taken precautions if I would have just been aware of them. And, uh, and I found, uh, like many people, I, my coworkers in the medical community weren't aware of PrEP or U equals U, especially at that time. What about now? Because I still hear stories of people saying that, you know, they've been HIV positive and they're hearing U equals U for the first time through programs like this. I, I mean, I didn't even know about it until three years ago. Um, roughly around the same time as you. Does it does it strike you as kind of outrageous in the medical community that there are still people and doctors out there who don't believe in this science? Yeah, I, um, certainly the people that don't believe in it and then the people that aren't aware of it and don't tell their patients about it, I think is another uh, uh, like a grievous error. I, uh, um, if my doctors had been aware of it, I mean, I was open with them about... Uh, um, my sexual practices and I, you know, they, my doctors could have, or nurses or anybody would, uh, who interacted with me in the medical community could have had the opportunity to teach me about PrEP or, um, so yeah, I think there's definitely deficit in the medical community. I think it's so great that you're using your platform in this really creative way um, and really normalizing. Um, we just take our pill, that's it. But I'm sure some of the responses have been crazy. What 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 is the craziest thing you've heard from someone who's who's seen the show? 
I guess people that just deniers, I mean, people that deny the, the fact that it's science, or pe especially people within the medical community. People, I'm a nurse, and I know that that's not true. You, you, you always, there's always a risk of transmission. Or, uh, so I, I think that's like, that, it, it, that's not the craziest thing. It's the most frustrating thing uh, it, um, that I get is people in the medical community that, that deny. Right. And you're also, I should mention, you're a father to two kids. Um, how has that conversation been with your kids um, and sort of general acceptance? Because there's still a lot of people out there who believe that people like us shouldn't have kids, which is absurd. Yeah, I, with my kids, I, I've been really open about the fact that I have HIV and I've always just really wanted to reassure them that, uh, that I'm safe, that, uh, that when I take my medications, that, I'll, that keeps me healthy and it'll keep them healthy as well, that, I, you know, that I'm not contagious when I, when I take the medication. And um, I haven't been, uh, I still have withheld held some information about like, how I contracted the virus. I'm just, I guess I just haven't been ready for those kind of conversations with my, with my kids yet. But um, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, for the most part, I think um, uh, the fact that I have kids when I, uh, on the show, because like, sometimes I bring them on as, as guests on the show. And I, I think that it, it uh, makes the message more um, accessible to a, a wider variety of people. I think kids kind of disarm people sometimes. Yeah, totally. I mean, like I said, I think it's fantastic. I mean, you've created this platform and, and you are in the most simplest of ways just normalizing HIV. And, and if it helps foster conversations with people, um, whether, you know, it's within, within their own community or online with you, hey, we're talking about it, and that helps destigmatize. Um, you've said that Josh Robbins, who's a fellow HIV activist, um, is someone you really admire. What's it about Josh that, that strikes a chord with you? Well, I, I, he was um, really vi visible when I was diagnosed, and, I, and he just seemed really open with his diagnosis and, um, and not afraid of it and just uh, uh, still uh, proud of who he was, and I, I just really admire that. You, you know, do you consider yourself an HIV activist now? I mean, I, I guess I, I would have to. I mean, I think <laughs> it's been, uh, yesterday was 1,600 pills uh, and 1,600 live shows. So yeah, I think uh, I, I'm an activist of sorts, I think. <laughs> I, I like this quote from you. Uh, you've said, when life hands you HIV, turn that shit into cool AIDS. <laughs> Explain that for us. Well, you know, I think it's probably fairly obviously like a, a play on the word, you know, like when life hands you uh, lemons, uh, make lemonade. And uh, I think um, just uh, take something that I really have a lot of shame about. Um, uh, you know, HIV was something that I had uh, yeah, just tons of shame about and to uh, instead wear it almost like a badge of uh, honor or badge of pride, like, turn it into something like, you know, cool, I guess. Well, I as, or like we say, turn positive into a plus. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> well, Jason Alvin, thank you for your amazing creativity, uh, for, for putting yourself out there for complete strangers in the world to throw their opinions at you, but to also normalize what it means to be living healthy with HIV and undetectable. Thank you so much for your time today, Jason. Yeah, thanks again for inviting me. I really enjoyed it. Absolutely. Good talking to you. Unfortunately, that is all the time we've got for this episode of Plus Talk. If you want more information, you can go to the website, pluslifemedia.com, and be sure to check out our social media pages. We are at Plus Life Media. Until next time, if you've got to put on the mask, wash your hands, stay safe, take care of each other. We'll see you soon.